Hello everybody and welcome back. It's me, Shweeby, and welcome to Asobi. This is a visual novel I found on Itch.io, made from developers in Milan, Italy. You are a private taxi driver. You go about and take care of reservations to specific destinations, and tonight we are picking up a girl and taking her to a hotel. The question is, who is she and what is her story? It's a calm night. You drove for hours, non-stop. Passengers continually getting on and off the taxi. Almost none of them talked. That's how the day passed by until now. Silent. Yours is a reservation-only service. You don't know anything about your clients. All you have to do is reach the pickup point where you get notified, and then you drive them to their destination. The majority doesn't talk at all, but sometimes some of them do. When your client talks to you, it feels as if you're exploring them. Every nuance every secret. Everything emerges from their heart's darkness. And when that happens at night, with all the lights turned on and the streets empty, you have the impression of driving in an endless tunnel of sensations, suspended from reality. Here you are then. You've reached another pickup point where a girl is waiting for you. She looks at the taxi, unimpressed. She must be used to seeing such luxury. Oh, isn't she fancy? She rapidly gets in. Her jacket and handbag are put neatly on the seat next to her. Good evening, miss. Where are you headed? Homunculus Hotel. Homunculus Hotel? Alright, if y'all watch Full Metal Alchemist, you know that's probably not a good thing. Do you know of it? Yeah, I know of it. You go there often? She doesn't answer. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. It's fine. I go there almost every week. Always on the same day. It's not something I'm ashamed of. The thing is that no one ever asks. They just assume. So I was surprised, that's all. What do they assume? My work. Sometimes my entire life. Once you say you're headed to a hotel, and you have no suitcases with you, it's easy to understand who you are, especially what you do for a living. So there's almost no need to ask, and many don't even want to know. That seems like it would be very annoying, only at the start. When you feel as if you don't exist, or as if existing or not makes no difference, and then you start wondering if it wouldn't be better to cease existing altogether. But over time, you get used to it. She seems comfortable. Her gaze is fixed beyond the window. You look at her in the rearview mirror. You can't help but wonder, who is she? I think nosy bitty bodies should just mind their own business, keep the eyes to the self, and keep your assumptions to yourself, all right? No need to make somebody uncomfortable. You don't know their life story. Mind your own business. And curiosity begins to animate your thoughts. Uh, how did you start? What about your family? Uh, what about your family? My family? It's just how you'd imagine. An unsafe haven. Unsafe. Completely. Nothing in there matters at all. Not your thoughts. Not your feelings. The words you'd like to say can't be said. The things you'd like to do can't be done. Your own identity is only based on theirs. They become you. And you have to close yourself in a box hidden under your bed. To oppose your family, you have to fight. But if you do, you'll have to face the consequences. And that's all I can say about my family. I was born from it. Yet I can't help but question, why can't they love me for who I am? Sometimes, I think that's just impossible. It doesn't matter who our parents are. We're going to end up very different from them. When I left, everything remained as before. A cage. Sadness was following me anyway. Blood was following me anyway. My ghost was following me anyway. You think you know me? Well, that's about it. What do you think? Hmm. In this case, I would ask how she handled it. And I understand, uh, on a very personal level, what it's like to have family that wants to cage you in. Uh, and have you fill in their 
particular outline of a person who they expect you to be, and yet it's not something that you want to be. It's a very hard situation to be in. So how did you handle it? Hmm. I just kept going. I don't know. I had no direction. So I just kept following the road ahead. Oh, anyway. Sorry, I haven't introduced myself. I'm Remu. And you are? Well, I'm just the driver, but you can call me Shrewby the Fabulous. I ain't judging. I'll just call you driver then. I kind of like it. Driver. Prostitute. Just two labels, right? Yet they tell more about us than our names. Silence falls for an instant. Personal opinion here? I really don't care. Because prostitutes, strippers, whatever. If that's how you make your paper in order to survive, ain't nobody can say a damn thing to you. In some cases, some people feel that that's the only way that they can survive. And if that means doing stuff like that, I'm not saying that that should be your go-to for everything, but it works. She's still alive, right? I can't really fault her for that. Look at how it's eating her from the inside out. Not saying that your regular 9-to-5 job doesn't eat at your soul in some fashion, however, she made this choice for herself and she knows that it works. In some cases, I would love to say that people always have a choice, but it seems like the situation that she's in, this is the only choice that she feels that she has. She's now looking in front of herself. Is she smiling? Seems like it. But the night is getting darker. And you find it difficult to see her clearly from the driver's seat. Anyway, how's your work? It seems calm. It mostly is, yes. Driving can be relaxing. I love driving. I love just picking a destination or no destination at all and just driving for hours on end. Especially at night. You know, there is this loneliness. You pick up the passengers, then drive to the destinations, and then loop continues. If the passengers are talkative, you get to pass an interesting moment. But if they're silent, like driving a ghost somewhere, it's only you, the road, and a presence behind you. Nights and loneliness. Seems like we have something in common. Your work is in a luxurious taxi. Mine shifts between luxurious dinner tables and bedrooms. We get to meet so many people, and yet we're both so alone. Have you always been alone? Not always. There was someone once. She was a nice girl. Sincere. Sweet. But now she isn't here anymore. She went away one day. I don't know why she did it. She didn't leave any message behind. Just packed her things and disappeared. We used to spend a lot of time together. All our free time, really. She had a normal job, you know. A splinted job in a video game company. She was so happy about it. Every day she only talked to that with a smile on her face. And I just stood there, next to her listening. I never had many things to say, so I could only do that. We had found some kind of balance. She wanted to express herself, and I wanted to have some demonstration that humanity could be... I don't know, something more than bodies and sweat. So in some way, we complimented each other. But... Well, it's difficult for people like me to have love stories. Especially if the one you love doesn't come for the same environment. There needs to be trust. And trust only comes with time. So, relationships are too difficult to sustain. And humans are complicated. They're greedy, as once they're with someone, they want more from that person. More love, more attention, more sex. And they get jealous, since they want to be the only one for you. But in the end, we all only need pure and sincere love. And that's something I couldn't give to her. So she ran away. And I ended up alone once again. This time for even longer than ever before. Only the ghost of myself remained. And that's when I started running for answers. To be found in the sound of this room. This sure is a long drive. I'm sorry. The hotel is pretty distant, you know? I never realized. It always seems so close. To tell you the truth, though, I never really reached it. I never visited that client. 
I was too scared. So every time I came close to it, I just turned back. But maybe today, maybe today's the right day. Yes, maybe it is. It's just that I don't know what could have waited for me there. Emptiness again? Or happiness? I read somewhere that Homunculus Hotel is a place of dreams. Every room is like a different dream, and they reflect the people who stay there. But dreams can sometimes be nightmares, right? What's your biggest dream? My dream? I was not unhappy. Or at least I don't think I was. I found my answers. In my body, I found myself. But maybe... Maybe I just wish that the ghost could have disappeared. The ghost of myself. Of my old self. Back when I was weak and incapable of taking my decisions. I always lived in the shadows of my parents, their ideas, their expectations, until one day I decided to go away. My first real choice, it seems like ages ago. Is it freedom all I wished for? Freedom to choose what to do with myself? Yes, maybe, but does it really matter now? I don't know what that says. Oh, she fell asleep. Her soft, slow breath dissolves into the car noises. The road ahead seems endless. Darker and darker, it stretches towards infinity. What? It's better to rest, as the road is still long. A trip like many others. You get the reservation, reach the pickup point, then drive towards the client's destination. We all make our reservations when we're born, then one day we'll reach our destination, just like this girl, and many others before and after. But have you ever thought about your own reservation, and your own ultimate destination? Whoa, okay. I knew this was gonna be some really deep storyline of some sort, Am I under the correct assumption that we are a Grim Reaper of sorts? Or is this like... Maybe like, uh, like we're a monster or something? I don't know, that's really cool either way. I'm gonna go with the Grim Reaper thing. However, I really love the fleshed out character with Ramu. Um, it shows a level of humanity that most people try to ignore or hide away. The fact is it's there. And thank you, Def, so much for making this game. This was, I really enjoyed this. I would love to hear everybody's personal opinions and thoughts on this uh, because it does touch a very, I would say, controversial subject in general. But I'm of the firm believer of if that's what you got to do to survive, it's on you. But understand that there's always other choices out there for you. Um, and that you are never pigeonholed no matter what anybody says to you. On that same note, though, anybody else judging you with the judgy eyes and judgy self need to mind their own business and keep their eyes to the self, alright? That's just a whole nother opinion there. But I digress. I love this because it shows the darker side to humanity because that is us. We are a walking contradiction of both good and bad you ever just kind of scroll through twitter or social media things and go this one tweet has made me lost all faith in humanity this one tweet has made me like have re-faith in humanity that's just how the human us works it's ridiculous but i love seeing things like this because i feel like they're so rare and few and far between to come across and it, it was really fleshed out. I really enjoyed this. So, Devs, thank you so much for making this. My Shreebles, I would love to hear your opinions and thoughts on this. Whether they're different or not, I don't care. Please let me know what you think about this game in general, or maybe the topic itself. And what do you think honestly happened at the ending? I think it's the Grim Reaper. I think the, re the reservation was, your time is up, it's time to move on, and hopefully in the next life it'll be a happier one for her. That's my, that's my truest wish right there. If you'd like to play this game for yourself and check out some of the other options they had available, link will be down in the description below. Until then, let's hear them. Do you know what your ultimate destination is, Battle Cries? Woo! Yeah! I'll see you guys in the next episode.